Hey guys, so um, it's Miss Brittany and Miss Abby here. So um, <laughs> with everybody being under quarantine and us not having youth and children small group on Wednesday night, we decided we wanted to come together and really provide you guys with a Bible study that you can do at home. Um, whether you have grown up youth or even just little, little bitty kids or a mixture of the two, um, we wanted to plan this together so that way I can give you the youth side and Miss Abby can give you the children's side and you can have a successful small group at home. Um, so today we're looking at um, Jesus setting an example and being hospitable to other people. Um, so we're going to go into really um, how to set up your space right now and Abby's going to kind of go into that. Yeah. All right. So um, at First Methodist Sherman, uh, we do this thing with children called Sacred Circle Time. Um, that's adapted from Reverend Dr. Leanne Hadley's um, Sacred Circle Time and Blessed to be a Blessing um, through North Texas Annual Conference. And so what she does is she kind of uh, has us or in, encourages us to set up a sacred circle space um, so that we can recognize God's presence not just in this space, but also in our hearts and minds as well. It's really great to have and do with children because it gives them a tangible uh, something to look at and experience and feel and touch and smell uh, to kind of recognize God's presence. And the hope is, is that we're laying a foundation for children's formation so that whenever they grow up, they can continue to remember and realize um, that God's presence is in their lives everywhere. So... Whenever we do this on Wednesday nights or on Sunday mornings during children's worship, we usually set up our sacred circle space. We have a mat or a cloth that we set our uh, things on uh, because the items that we have are sacred and they remind us of God's presence. And so you can use all different kinds of things from around your house. Um, we have three different items, one for God the Creator, God the Redeemer or God the Son, and then God the Spirit. And so for this afternoon, yeah. uh, we have, uh, this is our symbol for God the Creator. So the reason why this is God the Creator is because this is called a weather what? A weather booster? Yeah, it's, uh, it's a weather glass. Glass. So, so yeah, right. so you see the weather changes in here, so. Yeah. Um, it reminded me of God and him creating everything around us. Exactly. So this is a perfect example of how we can see and visualize God the Creator. Next, we have our symbol for God the Son. So this is our symbol for God the Son for obvious reasons, but also... Um, so I actually got this um, this summer on our mission trip in Costa Rica. Um, so it has lots of memories for me. Um, and I got to see God work through our youth and adult members there. See, that's an exact, that is a great example of God the Son, right? Faith in action. Then we also have our symbol for God the Spirit. Um, usually whenever we find things uh, for God the Spirit, we tend to look for things that maybe have more of uh, like sensory things. Maybe something that smells interesting or something that feels interesting uh, or something that sounds different. And so we chose this one. Um, so I got this at our own North Texas Annual Conference. Um, people in Ethiopia made it. I love elephants. Um, but there, this, like Miss Abby said, you can, like, feel, but you can also, like, there's some bells on it. So you hear the jingling, but it has little poof balls, and it, it's just fun and reminds me of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, awesome. Thank you. So now that we have our sacred circle set up, um, we sometimes, in children's ministry, we will set up a candle and light it as a representation of entering into our sacred time together in the presence of God, the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. And I believe uh, the youth do this as well. Yeah, so we um, like to get in our small groups and we put our phones away and make sure they're silent so we're not on them or distracted. Um, and we come together and make a space where we're all able to um, be together and really dive deeper into the Word of God. Um, so we light a candle, um, and so we're going to light a candle and keep it lit during our time together today. Awesome. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> and uh, let's see. Yay! Okay. 
All right, so next, I think we're going to set up our wonder space. So this is gonna kind of open up our hearts and minds to. Um, so our next part is a sketch and jot journal. Um, and these are really good because it's not just for youth. Children can do it, adults can do it. It's a lot of fun. So we're gonna include that in your email that you get every week from us. Um, and what it is, it's a blank piece of paper and it has some questions on it. And this one particular, you're gonna look at um, hospitality and what that looks like. How do you show hospitality to others in the community, even at church, school, or even in your own home? Um, and then you need, just needed to discuss like what did everybody draw or write or describe. Miss Abby brought up earlier some good things to do with kids instead of maybe drawing is getting some Play-Doh or clay and let them like form or get some Legos mm -hmm. and like build and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, I think it's really important though as you guys start getting into the discussion part, especially with children and youth. Um, we're working on them developing their own face. So it's important that we don't discourage kids or youth to say like, oh, you're wrong. No, this is what Jesus was really saying. Um, but really kind of asking them why and, oh, tell me more. That was really interesting. How did you come up with that? Because their answers are really profound and they'll come up with some really great stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, then and youth and we like to play games right we're a bunch of big kids and we like to play games but we also like to make sure our games are purposeful and have meaning behind them um so we have a fun game for you it's called the mirror game you don't need any supplies you can probably get two chairs or just sit on the ground um, so you're going to start off in pairs. So like me and Abby would look at each other um, and I'm going to make funny faces and she needs to copy me um, and then vice versa, right? Because mirrors go two ways. So we're not going to, I'm not going to do this the whole time. Abby's going to do some of it. Um, and then you're going to grab your other family members and as they're do participating in their own mirror, you're going to bring them into your group. And you're going to have one giant group and you're going to try to follow each other in there. Um, and so some questions you really want to ask after this game. Um, so maybe what was challenging about the group mirror game? What strategies did you develop in staying in sync with other players? Um, and so when you're doing this, um, you and you're trying to mirror someone else, you have to watch them carefully. The same is true when you're trying to follow someone else's example. As Christians, we try to follow Jesus' example. And that means we have to study Jesus' life in scriptures. And in order to monitor our life after his. Today we're going to read about a time Jesus set an example for the disciples and told them just as he had done. So, Miss Abby now is going to go into the Bible scripture and kind of give you a little bit of background information about what we're reading today. Um, but before she does that, those are two options that are really fun and exciting to kind of open up and get your mind thinking about what Jesus did and what hospitality is. Mm -hmm. um, and don't feel like you have to do all of this. Right. Um, kind of pick and choose what works best for your family, your time together. Um, so in saying all that, we'll start with the Bible. And also if you have children who are extra wiggly, um, don't be discouraged because sometimes children have to wiggle while they worship. And so it's good to, um, let them kind of wiggle and move and play with, uh, some of the things that they may have in their hand or draw as they listen. Um, because that's one of the ways that children process what's going on around them is to touch and feel and mess with stuff. Um, because what you'll find is that they truly are listening and so in our Bible story today, um, leading up to the events of our Bible story today, I guess, uh, we're in John's Gospel. This is John chapter 13, verses 1 through 15. And um, in John's Gospel, there is this theme of time. Um, that's not necessarily that Jesus is rushing or that he's running out of time necessarily, but it's more that there is an anticipation that's happening um, that Jesus is building up to because of his upcoming death and resurrection. And at this particular time, moment in John's gospel, Jesus is at this final meal with the disciples. So he's already entered Jerusalem. Um, he is sitting at the table with the disciples. Um, and really before the meal starts, Jesus opens up in an invitation to wash the disciples' feet. 
Now, this is really important because this is the full, a full expression of how much Jesus loves his friends, the disciples. And in John's gospel, Jesus uh, is kind of physical. So whenever he uh, is pictured sitting close to someone, he's sitting very close to someone. Um, whenever he uh, loves somebody, there's usually a hug or an embrace or something physical that happens there. Um, and in this uh, particular text, Jesus is physically washing the disciples' feet. There's also a theme here of how Jesus is showing an example of being not only a leader, but also a servant to his friends and being hospitable as well, as Brittany was talking about earlier. Um, in this moment, Jesus is showing that service and hospitality are so important for those of us who are servants and leaders. And we are all servants and leaders in the church in our own special and unique ways. Um, there is also, uh, while Jesus is doing this very physical foot washing with his disciples, there is also a spiritual invitation that is an underlying theme in this particular story because this invitation is, uh, it's a huge deal. It is an open invitation for the disciples to, uh, take Jesus up on God's promise to, uh, be in a relationship with God. And so what's cool for, about that for us today is that we can also enter into that relationship because uh, Jesus has opened up that um, spiritual invitation for all of us. And so that is how Jesus has set an example for us uh, in this time and space. And so today our scripture again comes from the Gospel of John chapter 13 verses 1 through 15. I'm reading from the, it's a common English Bible, women's Bible that uh, that Brittany has, uh, which is really wonderful uh, for some of you mamas or women out there who might enjoy uh, having like a women's take on the Bible. But also this, the language of the common English Bible is a little bit easier to understand than some of our more traditional readings. So it's the Bible um, version we also use in youth ministry. So the kids are really familiar with mm -hmm. it. Yeah. All right. So this is chapter 13 of John's gospel, verses 1 through 15. Before the festival of Passover, Jesus knew that his time had come to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them fully. Jesus and his disciples were sharing the evening meal. The devil had already provoked Judas, Simon Iscariot's son, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew the Father had given everything into his hands and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the table and took off his robes. Picking up a linen towel, he tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a wash basin and began to wash the disciples' feet, drying them with the towel he was wearing. When Jesus came to Simon Peter, Peter said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, You don't understand what I'm doing now, but you will understand later. No, Peter said, You will never wash my feet. Jesus replied, Unless I wash you, you won't have a place with me. Simon Peter said, Lord, not only by feet, but also my hands and my head. Jesus responded, Those who have bathed need only to have their feet washed because they are completely clean. You disciples are clean, but not every one of you. He knew who would betray him. That's why he said not every one of you is clean. After he washed the disciples' feet, he put on his robes and returned to his place at the table. He said to them, Do you know what I have done for you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you speak correctly because I am. If I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you too must wash others' feet. I have given you an example. Just as I have done, you must also do. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. Um, so as we read the Bible verse, um, sometimes it can be um, a really distracting for kids and youth. So um, we always encourage you guys to really dive a little bit deeper and see how the kids um, really interpret that. Some ways we do that in youth ministry is um, through acting it out. Um, and we're actually going to provide you with a little skit 
um, that you can go through and you can, you know, go grab some clothes out of each other's closets, dress Show your up. your creativity. Yeah. yeah, we would yeah. love to see yeah. it. Yeah. You know, you, you always have that uh, garbage bag of clothes in the garage. <laughs> like, pull those bad boys out. Yeah. yeah. Just have some fun with it. If you have costumes, wigs, old Halloween stuff. Um, <laughs> it would be so much fun. <laughs> and just act it out. Um, if you're not really into acting, um, but it's totally fun and kids get way into it, so you should. Um, there's some other ways we also look at Bible verses. Um, sometimes we'll get old magazines or newspapers or even like cereal boxes and cut out characters and things, um, and make kind of a collage of each verse. So each person gets a different verse of our scripture reading and, um, we'll interpret what that means to us and explain to the group, like, this is why I see it this way. Um, another way is um, maybe getting in pairs and creating a little poster and giving them like a 30 second yeah. commercial pitch that on it. So um, this Bible verse actually really means a lot to me because one of the things on mission trip is at the end of the trip, we normally wash each other's feet and pray over one another. Um, so that's something you can really do with this Bible verse is finding a tub, a bucket, just something that you have laying around the house, filled up with a little water and soap and get a rag, um, get on your knees and wash each other's feet and take turns praying over one another. And that's a really good way to kind of reflect on this Bible verse. You can also pay attention to maybe some of the uh, conversations that you can have with your children around this. Why are you washing my feet, Mom? Are they stinky? I mean, there's all kinds of fun things that you can talk about uh, from and through that. Now, if you have younger children, uh, one thing that you could possibly do is uh, to maybe... Skits sometimes aren't realistic for little bitty ones. Um, so what you could do is retell the story maybe with figurines. Like if you have like a Captain Marvel, you know, or a, <laughs> or a dinosaur or something, right? You know, you can, you can retell the story in fun ways so that children kind of see and remember and hear it again just with um, actual maybe action figures. Um, that would be a fun way to retell this story. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so as you like retell the story, get really into it, um, it's good to kind of reflect and we have some questions for you. Um, so foot washing was very popular in Jesus's time, right? To show hospitality to one another. Um, and so by washing the disciples feet, um, he was welcoming everyone into God's, in God's house. So what do you think it means to live in God's house is one of the questions. Do you think we have to wait until the afterlife to dwell with God? What could it look like to be at home with God here on earth? And how can you live with God each day? Um, so those are just some questions that are very abstract. There's no right or wrong answer, just kind of how you think it is. And then as you guys um, are going around the table, like discussing, uh, make sure everybody gives an example um, so, and I think Abby has some for like a little bit more kid friendly. That's not as abstract. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So for, um, if you've got younger children, some of, some of the questions that Brittany just asked are just maybe a little abstract. So some, some things you could ask for little kiddos would be, um, how, how do you know that God is here? How, how can you feel God's presence? Now presence is kind of a big word, so it might be something more like, um, where is God? How can you feel God? Have you ever heard God speak to you? You'd be in, it'd, um, it'd be very interesting to hear what children say because some children may not necessarily hear God speaking, but they know that God speaks to them or in different ways through different people. Um, how is it that they feel welcomed into God's house? Maybe asking them, what is God's house? Where is God's house? Um, where does God live? And I think you would find some really wonderful conversation topics because what I would encourage too is to is for you to answer those questions too. And as you hear your children answer, uh, be be mindful maybe to answer those questions with other answers so, or other questions. I'm sorry. So if they say, I don't know, where do you think God lives? You could say, well, I don't know. Where do you think God lives? Right. <laughs> um, I think that would spark some kind of imagination and extra curiosity uh, for, for your children. So. Um, yeah. And this is really, it's a really good activity. It's, this is where you get your profound answers from kids and youth because, mm -hmm. um, they just, yes. they're, they're so creative and they just, they see God in different ways than we do. 
Um, and it's just really great. Um, so now we want to kind of move into a prayer time. Um, and so Jesus always welcomed his followers and made everybody feel at home. Wherever they were at, whoever they were, all were always welcome. So right now we want you to get comfortable um, and just get just in a comfortable position. Maybe that's crossing your legs. Maybe that's going from a chair to the floor. Um, just finding a spot that you're comfortable in and relaxing. And to close your eyes and to breathe in and out, in through your nose, out through your mouth. Um, this is your time. So... Um, just start to relax, um, feel the candle burning, um, and just think through. And as you're sitting there, Miss Abby's going to read through a spiritual meditation um, for you to visualize God's house. All right. So um, as I read through this again, just to reiterate or touch on, um, sometimes children are going to wiggle a lot while they do this, which is totally fine. Do not be discouraged. Um, if if you need to pause the video and come back to it, we totally can. There will be moments where we'll pause so we can stop and reflect. Um, or if we need, or if you need to fast forward through this just a little bit to kind of move quickly for some of your wiggly children, you can totally do that too. Uh, that's really up to you. All right, so. We are eyes closed. We are breathing in through our nose, out through our mouths. We are calming down, centering ourselves around God, the Creator, the Son, and the Spirit. Jesus said he was going to going ahead of us to prepare a place for us. We are followers of Jesus. Imagine that Jesus is with you right now. He says to you, don't be troubled. Trust in God. Trust in me, too. My Father's house has room for you. You know the way to the place that I am going. Then Jesus turns away from you and begins to walk away. And you start to follow him. He's leading you to God's house. You have now arrived. Jesus has brought you to the place where you can feel completely at home with God. It's easy to feel God's presence in this place. There are no distractions from God's love, and you can relax here. You can chill out here. Take a look around this place that God or Jesus has led you. In this place, you can tell God whatever is on your heart. Take a moment to tell God what's on your heart today. This place is always here for you. You can come back here whenever you like. For now, you turn to leave and go back home the way that you came. You come back to the room, hearing the sounds around you, the wiggling of your fingers and toes, and when you're ready, you can open your eyes. <laughs> so as you're sitting here um and you were just led to this wonderful place and able to have your moment to speak with jesus um if you're comfortable why don't you guys take some time and talk with your with each other about what kind of experience you just had so um what place did you know, were you led to was it a place you've been before was it somewhere that you've never been? Um, did you feel God talking to you in that moment? And what was that like? And how did you feel? Mm -hmm. um, you can also get a piece of paper and you can draw it out. We're also providing you with that. Um, where it asks you a little bit of questions about what God's house look like for you. Um, God's house for me always looks like nature in the woods, hiking, and just being around all the beautiful, um, things that he has created. Mm -hmm. Um, so just take some time at, with one another and discuss that. Um, make sure you pause the video so you have plenty of good time or a good enough time to discuss. Um, after that, and after you draw your picture, create it with clay or Play-Doh, Legos, that's my go-to. <laughs> um, then um, we're going to move into some group prayer time. So this is a time where you guys are going to gather together, um, circle up, 
no matter how big your family is or how small, and you're going to hold each other's hands now. Um, there's no waffling, as we like to call it. That's where, you know, you're interlocking your fingers. Um, just like a good hand hold, not too, um, you know, hard or anything like that. And um, one of the parents are youth, and um, youth are great at praying, so I strongly encourage them to lead, start leading with the prayer. Mm-hmm. Um, so you're going to just come to God in a time of prayer and ask Him to be with you and kind of pray whatever is on your heart, what's ever on your mind, whatever you're feeling. Um, and once you have finished praying, instead of saying amen, you're going to squeeze the person's hand to your right, not too hard, just a soft little gentle squeeze. Um, And then that person can either start praying out loud what they are feeling or thinking what's on their heart. Or if they don't want to say it out loud, you just like say a silent prayer in your heart. Mm -hmm. And then when you're ready to pass on the prayer, you squeeze it. And the next person goes all the way till it gets around back to the person that has started the prayer. Mm -hmm. Um, And then when it gets back to that person, that person will say amen. So everybody has a moment in this group prayer time um, to really say what's on their hearts to God and to be with one another. Yeah. Then if you've got children uh, who are going to be doing this with you, um, you can allow them some time to uh, pray whatever is on their hearts. Um, Sometimes it's hard for children to kind of formulate into words what they're thinking. Um, So have have patience with them. And if they need some help, of course, lean in and help. Um, But yeah, this is a good way to kind of hear how uh, our children can uh, both share their experience of God in their life, but also you kind of catch a window into their spiritual formation whenever they pray out aloud to you in this, in this way. Um, um, yeah, I think what, well, I think that's it. it? it? Yeah. So, (laughs) um, we hope you enjoyed your Bible study time with us. Yeah. Um, If you have uh, any questions about this, of course, uh, give us a shout. We would love to see the things that you have shared with each other uh, in in this process of this Bible lesson today. So uh, we would love to see pictures of the symbols that you have found around your house for God the Creator, God the Son, and God the Spirit. You can send us pictures of the candle that you're using. Um, if you don't have a candle, maybe something else that you have used to represent uh, God God's presence there with you today. Um, we would also love to see your creativity. So for your children or youth who have uh, drawn things or have shared their magazine moments or have uh, created a skit and you're like, this is way too funny or cute to not share, please share that with us. We would love to see (laughs) all the awesome things going on. At the same time, this lesson is really interesting because we're talking about hospitality and service and we're in this very weird time and... in just our world in general, but also kind of in our spiritual space because we're not, we're not able to gather together in groups and show hospitality to others right now because of um, the things that are going on in our world with the with the um, worry and maybe the frightening um, and maybe unknown of what's going on here with the current COVID-19 virus that we're all um, having to stay kind of secluded or what is it, social distancing ourselves, mm-hmm. right? So, um I I would be curious to see what some of those conversations might look like uh, with your youth and children regarding this very interesting time that we are in in the life of our community and in our uh, current state of the country. So um, if you have any kind of insightful or wonderful things that you'd like to share about that, we'd love to hear that and see that. Um, Maybe you can come up with some fun, interesting ways to talk about how we can still be hospitable to others without being in close proximity. Um, with each other. So maybe that that could be something that we would love to hear and see uh, from you uh, during this time. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, definitely talk about it with your kids. Um, Cherish said it's like we're in um, a tornado's happening and we're all in shelter right now, but we just don't know (laughs) when we're going to get out of this shelter. Um, (laughs) And so it's interesting to hear how they feel and are thinking at this time. Mm -hmm. And it's important that there's discussions around that. Um, and for youth and teenagers in general, they feel things very deep and very wide, um, and they don't always like talking about it. Mm-hmm. So there's some creative ways um, 
they can draw it. You can um, journal it um, for them who are always on their phones mm-hmm. texting you or even sending you an email about right. kind of what they're thinking is also mm-hmm. some great tips right. and stuff. Um, I would say we definitely miss seeing all of you guys and ha- uh, hanging out. Um, but as long as we're in this social distancing thing, me and Abby are committed to coming together each week and providing you with a Bible study, um, to do at home with your family. Um, so this is something for you to do on Wednesday night, or if Wednesday night doesn't work for you, you can do it any night of the week. Mm -hmm. Um, and we'll also provide some little bit of a transcript for you and all those pages and things that we talked about. Yes. So yeah, definitely share pictures with us. Yes. We would love to see it. Yeah. All right. Y'all have a great week. And if you have questions, don't, um, just reach out to us anytime. Okay. Thanks. (laughs) Bye.